The Center for Biodiversity Genomics at the University of Guelph is the home of DNA barcoding. Here, researchers are developing and refining protocols for biodiversity discovery and analysis. Museum specimens are an essential resource for understanding biodiversity and contribute to the DNA barcode reference library. The Center for Biodiversity Genomics Collections and Imaging Experts will demonstrate a few key steps in the workflow for DNA barcoding museum specimens. This video is intended as a supplement to the protocols found in CBG's museum sampling instructions. For step one, download this document and give it a read before you start. After you have read the instructions, assemble the equipment required to process your museum specimens. Once your equipment is organized, you are ready to go. Specimen Selection First, label the exterior of your array with the first microplate number you will use. Second, work through the collection in a systematic way, according to your target list, beginning with the first unit tray in the order of interest. Once you encounter a species designated for analysis, select four specimens, if available. When possible, choose specimens that were collected most recently from different localities. When you're selecting your specimens, there are a few things to consider. This may include curator specifications, restricted material or type specimens, specimen collection method, and collection date. Third, when a specimen meets the requirements, remove it from the unit tray. Place the specimen in your array box and replace it with a specimen placeholder label. The label ensures that each specimen can be returned to the correct location in the collection after processing. Fourth, after selecting an appropriate specimen, fill out the museum harvesting tracking sheet. Be sure to note the cabinet and drawer number where the specimen came from and any other useful details to keep the process organized. Fifth, continue working through the collection until you have filled the gridded array box with 95 specimens while 96 is left empty as a negative control. Step three, labeling the specimen. First, cut and place the barcode labels for your array on a foam tray in sample ID order. Second, starting with your first specimen, check that you have the correct label based on the array and well number and attach a specimen barcode label. Repeat for each specimen in your array. Step four, digitize specimen metadata and submit to bold. First, use the plate number and well locator as the sample ID for each specimen. The list of sample IDs is available in the label template file. Second, reading directly from the labels attached to your first specimen, enter all collection information, taxonomy, and other data into the bold specimen data spreadsheet, according to the bold reference guide on data entry and submission. Repeat for all 95 specimens in the array. Remember to include any important notes from your museum harvesting tracking sheet onto the bold data spreadsheet. If the specimen label lacks GPS coordinates for its collection site, these details should be obtained from a reliable mapping source. After you've completed the databasing for one array box, upload the specimen data to bold following the submission guidelines available on the bold systems website. Step five, photographing the specimen. First, take an image of the array box number as a placeholder. Second, take a picture of the whole array box. This image is a reference to use after the container is disassembled. Make sure the label with the box's array number is in the image. Third, when you start imaging the specimens, always start with well A01 and go in array order. Fourth, decide the best orientation for the specimen, dorsal or lateral view. For specimens imaged dorsally, the anterior part of the specimen is placed on top of the image frame. For specimens imaged laterally, the anterior part of the specimen is placed on the left side of the image frame. It's recommended to take one image per specimen to avoid errors. However, Bold allows up to 10 images per sample ID if needed. The specimen should take up the majority of the frame and be in the center. There should be no extra white space. Image all 95 specimens in the array, then upload to your computer. Once uploaded, rename each image by their sample ID. Next, edit any images that require cropping or rotating. Images should be cropped at a 4 to 3 ratio. 
Finally, upload your images to Bold using the image data file included in the CCDB kit. Check out the Bold reference guide for image upload instructions. Step 6. Specimen Tissue Sampling First, prepare your workstation with your tissue sampling supplies. Second, light your Bunsen burner. Next, remove the cap strip from row A01 to A12 of your microplate. Dip your forceps in ethanol and sterilize in the flame. From your array of pinned specimens, select the specimen in cell A01 for tissue sampling. Remove a leg from the specimen and place into cell A01 of the microplate. Repeat for each specimen in the array, sterilizing your forceps between samples. Place each into the corresponding microplate well. When you've completed tissue sampling, secure the cap strips back on the microplate and turn off the flame. Finally, ensure the CCDB plate record for your array has been generated. See the CCDB sampling kit instructions for details. Step 7. Returning the specimens to the collection. First, refer to your museum harvesting tracking sheet to locate the correct cabinet and drawer location for the first specimen in your array. After finding the placeholder label in the collection, replace the label in the unit tray with the corresponding specimen from your array. Discard the placeholder label. Repeat this process until all specimens from your array have been returned to the collection. Step 8. Shipping the microplates of tissue samples to the Center for Biodiversity Genomics. Refer to the CCDB sampling kit instructions for details on how to ship your plate to the CCDB lab. Please see CBG's museum sampling instructions for more details. For more information about the Center for Biodiversity Genomics, please visit biodiversitygenomics.net.